Our topic today is broadband infrastructure and access. And uh, this is a topic that's very close to my heart regarding economic development, community development. It's critical, and if you'll indulge me for just a second, I'd like to start with a quote. I was looking for an interesting quote that emphasizes the importance of broadband in our lives, and I came across this one. It's, it says, broadband access is the great equalizer, leveling the playing field so that every willing and able person, no matter their station in life, has access to the information and tools necessary to achieve the American dream. That is how critical uh, and, and foundational uh, the broadband is. And with that, I would like to introduce Tom Mern, who uh, was named Frontier Communications General Manager in the Moscow Pullman, in, in conjunction with uh, their July 1st, 2010 purchase of the Verizon Communication Assets, excluding wireless, uh, in 13 states, including Idaho. He was promoted in mid-2011 as the General Manager in the Coeur d'Alene market, and he was recently promoted to the General Manager position serving all of northern Minnesota in conjunction with Frontier's doubling in size uh, on April 1st with the acquisition of Verizon's landline communication assets in California, Florida, and Texas. He has a Bachelor of Science degree in Forestry uh, from the University of Minnesota and a Master of Arts in Business Management from the College of Saints, Scholastic, and Duluth, Minnesota. Before crossing over to the communications industry, Tom ran a large regional timberland business segment for Potlatch Corporation in both the Lake States and in uh, Northern Idaho. Uh, Tom's recognized as a community leader and has served on the Coeur d'Alene Chamber Board of Directors, the Post Falls Chamber Board of Directors, and the Hayden Chamber of Direct, uh, Board of Directors. He's developed Frontier as a trusted technology partner with major commercial and residential customers and is very active in the community. Wife Sarah and Tom are both from Minnesota and are now empty nesters, excited to move back to their home state, Minnesota. They have four adult children, Chelsea, Caitlin, Zachary, and Maddie. Uh, Tom spent his, uh, his childhood, this is interesting, between Ely, Minnesota, where his dad is from, and Rainy Lake, where they had a houseboat uh, to base uh, their summer fishing excursions from. Tom enjoys spending time with family, hunting, fishing, boating, and playing hockey. Fits right in. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Tom Murr. Well, hello. Glad to be here today. I, I'm going to run through some slides, try and share some information on our company, what we're doing in Minnesota. I would say we're open. There'll be questions at the end, but I'm open to questions as we go. And um, Sean and Paul will keep me uh, squared up on time so we get out of here on time. I'm available after uh, if folks have questions or want to talk um, as well. And um, did that jump forward too? There we go. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about Frontier as a company. Paul mentioned that we doubled in size on April 1st. Uh, that has impacts for the falls, as I'll describe. And also uh, talk about uh, the internet itself. And then also talk more specifically about what we're doing with our network at the national, state, and regional level that, that affects us here. Um, Frontier is uh, a Fortune 250 company uh, with this recent acquisition. We have just under 30,000 employees. We operate in 29 of the 52 states. We are 100% U.S. workforce based. Um, some of you as customers, when we were in the transition from April 1st until just a couple days ago, uh, we had inherited a Philippine call center from Verizon that we had to hold on to until we had our workers trained in the U.S. And some, some of you experienced that. So we had a brief period of time where we weren't 100% U.S. workforce base, but we got back to that as quickly as we could after the acquisition. That's a very important thing to us as part of who we are and part of our identity as a company. We um, have seven regions across the United States. Um, they may not make as much sense to you geographically, but it's more set up for the business sense and the network sense and our long-term future growth. Uh, we are in what we call the national region, the yellow region. And you know, part of the reason it was uh, a great opportunity for me, our president of the region, 
um, was able to uh, allow me to move from northern Idaho back to Minnesota, uh, which was part of our family plan as our youngest daughter just graduated from uh, high school and is actually going to school here in Minnesota uh, down in the Twin Cities at McAllister. So we had kind of a five-year plan to get back and we accelerated that and uh, it was a great opportunity for us to to get back to Minnesota. We're very excited about that. I'm not going to read through all the information here, but um, one of the things that I wanted you to know in our values at the top is we really do put our customers first. Uh, I know we have challenges with our infrastructure in Minnesota, um, but one thing is our techs and our company will work uh, our tails off to take care of you as our customer. We'll do everything possible that we can to take care of you as our customers. Um, we have uh, what we call local engagement. The reason I'm talking to you today is we are involved in our communities and we take that role very seriously um, and we take that um, to heart and try and really participate and move the ball forward. Um, Paul's part of economic development. Economic development is Frontier's lifeblood over time. You know, when you think about it, um, we uh, in order for us to grow and improve as a company over time and reinvest and grow our business, we're very dependent on economic development. So it's hand in glove with what we do uh, as a company. The other thing I wanted to point out is we are a very veteran friendly company. We've received awards for that. Uh, we're very focused on that. The picture at the bottom of the page is a program called Honor and Remember. It's something that Frontier uh, works with families who have, have lost a fallen hero in their family and have requested a flag. Uh, what Frontier will do is, is really whatever the family wants in order to present that flag and honor uh, their lost person. And the reason I bring that up is I wanted to give you a little bit of an understanding of the character of the company and who we are as Frontier Communications. We have a tremendous amount of products. Uh, if you haven't checked in with your account executive recently, um, you know, I really highly recommend it. Um, you can get in touch with me and I'll have that person come out. Uh, we're really capable of bringing world-class communications to the Falls area. And um, as we work to improve our core network and push that bandwidth and those products and services out, to the more remote areas. Um, we really have some things that you probably uh, um, may not be aware of that Frontier provides for our commercial customers. So I, I was going to spend a little bit on the internet, so who can tell me how the internet works? <laughs> Zeros and ones. <laughs> zeros and ones. It is, at the end of the day, it is all zeros and ones. When you get down to the basic, 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 how information, how data is transferred, it's zeros and ones. So what else? How does zeros and, go ahead. DSL and uh, cable and satellite would be the main transmission methods. Yes, I, you know, yes. I think you're hitting on, on three. There's more. Wi-Fi, I guess. Yep. Still need cable or need something coming. Right. Right. So our customers are residential, commercial, and what we call carriers. So all of the mobile companies, you know, they, they try and get your mobile data to a landline and into fiber as quickly as they can. So how else, how does the internet work? With servers, a transmission system and software. Okay, so, so you got equipment, and then you need energy, light, or radio waves, right, to, to move the data from A to B. So, so why does the internet work? How can we all be like plugged in like this together? Because you're doing the job. <laughs> no, that one isn't, I don't, I don't get to get credit for that. But part of it is, I mean, we, we connect it. But, but why is it so seamless? I mean, how how are we able? How is everybody able to connect to everybody and go through this evolution that we went through? Interfaces. What's that? 
Well, who said that? <laughs> exactly. That's that's the key. It's internet protocols, IP. You hear that word, IP. What is IP? So when everybody operates off of the same standards, uh, that's how we're able to tie the entire thing together. And so there's two types of addresses, and this is the last kind of deepness I'll get on, on how it works, but does anybody know the two types of IP addresses, internet protocol addresses? Some of you that have a business have one type? No, hey, it's lunch and learn, right? So we throw <laughs> stuff up. There's a dark internet. No, no. The dark. There's dark fiber, sure. That's yeah. just that's just tubes, if you will, right? No, I mean, there's a whole area out there where it's sort of the wild west. It's called the dark internet. You know what I'm talking about? No, I don't. <laughs> well, we'll figure that out. That sounds interesting, the dark internet. So um, there's two types of addresses. One is a static and one is a dynamic, okay? So there's dynamic IP addresses and static IP addresses. So you can think of that address as how devices know there's one on each end, right? In a static situation, it's gotta be in one spot. It's your printer that everybody continuously hooks up to. It's your machine for processing payments. Um, those are a static IP that's set for forever. The dynamic IPs, when you hook up your modem in the morning, it's going out and grabbing from a pool and it uses that address for a period of time and then pitches it back. And there's a finite amount of addresses. That's why that dynamic's important because we only play with the addresses that are in play at the time and allow people to put that address back and someone else to use it. And more to come on that. The nerds will create more addresses and a way to, a way to, you know, tie the ones and zeros to the new addresses. So I did want to spend a second or two on data. You hear a lot about the bits and the bytes and the, you know, and there, and there's two concepts I wanted you to think about. One is volume, right? So so how much volume of data do you use? And then the other is speeds. There's all kinds of information out there on speeds. Generally, people talk about megabytes per second, right? Megs per second, you hear that meg term. Um, in terms of volume, a byte is a single character. You can think of a byte storing a, the letter A, right? And so as you go down through it, the Kilobyte is a short story. Megabyte is a high resolution photo, and again, megabytes per second, right? If you're streaming a video, you want at least two or three megs per second in order to have that experience be what you need it to be. A gigabyte, and I did this for your dad, Craig Hell. I knew Craig from my uh, uh, from my previous role as resource manager for College Corporation, but. But uh, that's a pickup filled with printed paper. I mean, imagine that volume of data, right? Now, a terabyte is 50,000 trees converted to paper. The data that could be stored on 50,000 trees converted to paper. And it's kind of hard to get our minds around this. Now, we have users that have our three and six meg services that use a terabyte a month in volume. So you're like, wow, what are the, and it is, what are you doing? You know, as we're all trying to share that volume, think about it, nobody today, because we don't charge this way, people don't, aren't charged on volume. So there's not a lot of focus on, like gas efficiency, right? Not a lot of focus today on you know, am I, you know, I left my Pandora on streaming music all night long. Um, it's kind of like leaving your lights on in a sense, right? But part of that is, you know, how we charge today. Part of that is how consumers uh, use information. So a petabyte would store all the information in all of the research <laughs> libraries in the U.S. An exabyte 
five of them, it's all the words that were ever spoken over time. I mean, imagine that volume of data. And then when you get to a zettabyte, it's a thousand times that. It's a thousand times that piece of information. So where is this thing going? I mean, where is the internet and the use? And Paul, I think that was a great quote. You know, what is happening uh, with how we all operate? You know, why is it that a few years ago, you know, we were just barely able to get internet out into Tuleyville, but it was great. I mean, they, they had nothing. We were barely able to reach Brady Lake houseboats, and, and it was adequate for a long period of time. Well, things have changed dramatically. Things have changed dramatically, and Frontier is investing to change its network to try and deliver and catch up and keep ahead of that demand over time. But um, there's a book that Bell Labs put out, um, and they call it the Future X Network, and, it, and it's very interesting. You know, it's a bunch of brainiacs with the networks. You know, how is this thing going to unfold? Um, and from their perspective, they kind of divided these time frames up into what's going on with the internet. So you had the 70s to the 90s. It was really the pre-internet experience when you think about it. 90 to 95, remember you used to type in a URL, someone gave you a URL and you went and typed it in, oh, I can go to that site, right? And that is not that long ago when you think about it. And then 95 to 2000, well then Google. Hey, I can just type in a word or a subject and I can find something that I'm looking for. And then we started to share. Napster, kind of the, the infamous share of music. You know, we, we went through this period of being able to share with people, right? And just think about our behaviors and our, our changes over time. And then uh, the next period, business figured out, hey, wow. Everybody's using this thing. I can get on this thing, sell my products and services, and be able to get into the game here. And that's where Netflix came about. And if, if you guys are aware, uh, Netflix and sites like it use more than 50% of the internet usage today. You know, that's, that's the big drain on everybody's bandwidth, if you will. And they ride that for free. By the way, they ride that super highway for free, no taxes, no charges. Uh, and they're selling a product to you and using that medium to get it delivered. Uh, then came, you know, the most recent period, which we uh, were part of in, in just the last few years. And think about it for a second. All of a sudden, mobile devices. You know, how many of you played around with your mobile device before you came in here? And not just voice. You were texting. You were looking at your emails. You were checking the stock market. Um, all of that uh, has become a normal, well, it's just part of the thing today. And then what they see, and what we believe is true, there's going to be a second wave of commerce as people really understand the efficiency in automating everything we do and tying our businesses together and our inventories together. And, you know, I think about Boise Cascade as I drove by this morning and being able to completely integrate their machines and you know as opposed to just having it within the plant to be monitored so um, they really see this as a revolutionary change when you look at the usage graph that covers these time periods it isn't like a straight line going up it's like a it's like a logarithmic increase in the usage so in 2015 we talked about a zettabyte 1,000 times, you know, as great as all the words that were ever spoken, so to speak. That zettabyte, uh, in 2015, we used one. The conservative estimate, as we move into, uh, that's on an annual basis. The conservative estimate, as we move into the next five years, including 2016, is that we'll be using 2.6 zettabytes per year. And that's if they, that's a very conservative if the economy doesn't do well, if you know, that's probably the lowest trajectory. So we are going to more than double our annual usage. Again, keeping this logarithmic curve going as 
we figure out I can monitor my refrigerator, I can, you know, set my air conditioner from home, I can go look in my house and look at my cameras, um, think about the implications on business and what's going to happen with respect to people's wants and needs and immediacy of, you know, I want my financial advisor, he's not in, but I want to automatically do something with my financial portfolio with your permission. No doubt. Not, not just on my own with your permission. So just, you know, think about where we're headed with that for a second or two. And, and uh, so our company, you know, Frontier, is really trying to keep up with and get ahead of this game. And it's challenging. You know, we are not a utility. Uh, we don't get to arbitrarily increase our rates on our users to uh, be able to increase the infrastructure and so forth. We are a competitive business. And so it's a very challenging environment for us to satisfy the need we just talked about and invest. And um, as I mentioned, we doubled in size on April 1st. So how, you know, so great, Frontier, unless you own our stock, it's a very good dividend, unless you own our stock, um, you're like, well, so what does that mean to international folks? Um, the great thing about that for us is we, infra we, um, we improved our infrastructure across the country by that acquisition. And over the next 18 months or so, we're going to increase our bandwidth, our own bandwidth capabilities by about tenfold with how we're unfolding our new infrastructure across the company and across the country. So we'll be less dependent on others for some of our major transport, and we're able to grow our own network. How does that impact uh, Minnesota? We are in the process today of doubling the size of our network, and that'll be completed in a few short weeks, and that is staying ahead of the demand that we have here within Minnesota. And for us in uh, in northern Minnesota, I'll get to that in just a moment, the, the, the two other points I wanted to mention is that um, we are rolling out our own video product. Now this is something that we didn't have as a company, but in 2010 when I joined Frontier, we acquired video assets, Fios, many of you have heard of that with Verizon. And then in uh, 2014, we grew the company by 25%, acquiring AT&T's assets in Connecticut. They have their own uh, video product. And then with this recent acquisition with Verizon's assets in those large states, we really were able to jump into the video game ourselves. And all this time, we've been working on our own product to compete with uh, some, of our, some of our cable uh, partners. So that's that's a new thing. You'll hear about that. It's called Vantage TV. It's rolling out in a number of states in 2016 for Frontier. And uh, Minnesota is one of those states. And I'm rolling this out in the southern part of northern Minnesota, which is just north of the Twin Cities. And as we get bandwidth capabilities, we'll be bringing that um, throughout the state, wherever we have the bandwidth. The, the, the part of this that's kind of cool is with the IP technology we're using with that, um, it's about two and a half megs, so it's an efficient delivery. And so with about 10 megs, you could run four HD TVs continuously, like people do, uh, in their homes. And uh, so it's, uh, it's something that's coming uh, with Frontier. And really what we're doing with our network is um, you used to have to have pieces of equipment um, and, and when you wanted to increase your bandwidth you kind of had to change out all the equipment. I'm oversimplifying for sure, but you kind of had to keep changing out all the equipment. Um, the new platform that Frontier is putting in place is a much more modern network where we're able to increase the bandwidth uh, much more easily without the same amount of investment that we had to in the past. In northern Minnesota, what we've been working on for the last couple of years and accelerated into 2016, uh, many of you have heard of the border-to-border -border funding. 
and so we are ahead of schedule. Those sites were set to be completed by 2017. I know that some folks came out and told folks, you know, certain parts were going to be completed earlier, and then all of a sudden that became our date. But, but the real date with the state monies is next year. We will finish those projects in this year. Uh, we have 42 sites that we're putting in place. And along with that, we put the network infrastructure in a partnership in place. And so, you know, why did Frontier partner and go after state funding to do that? Um, those are areas that we never would have built out to. We would never have been able to afford to build out to those areas. With some supplemental funding, we're able to put our own funds in there and together be able to build out to areas that would be economically, it just wouldn't be feasible for us to go after. Yes? Tom, what areas in Cooch County were you able to put into your plans? I'll show you those. Okay. I'll show you those coming up. Um, the network infrastructure, Sean, affected all of us up here, and we increased our bandwidth capabilities to the falls by about 10 times. So as we get a couple more sites up, we'll be rolling over to that new network. And so we've increased our long-term capabilities up here by about tenfold. So what does that, what does that mean to like that? What does that mean to, let's say, someone vacationing on a Ray Lake houseboat or someone in Birchdale? That Nothing to a guy on a houseboat that I know of unless they're using their, you know, their mobile phone. You mean out, out yeah. on the lake? On the lake. Somewhere. Yeah, you know, the lake is, uh, is not something that we cover. Um, you know, we cover the landline assets. So mobile, um, AT&T and others are more easily able to upgrade their towers and provide a different level of mobile service. Uh, no question about that. Uh, and that, that's up to them then to invest and do what they're going to do with their towers. But we can deliver whatever bandwidth they need um, from that sense. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. Yep. Right. Do you see that on You know, I, I, to answer your question, like generally for people that live way out there, um, it's not that far when you're driving your car, when you're trying to send energy out to your place to get that product to you, it's a long way. Um, generally, when you're beyond about three miles, it's very difficult to get it out there unless we have a regeneration site. And when you when you look at the future of the network and what we're trying to do and invest, we keep trying to build sites closer and closer and closer to your home to be able to deliver that energy. So I w I can get your specific address and tell you if there's any projects or you know what the what the the deal is for you specifically. But in general, you know, the further out you are, it's going to take us time to build out there. We have customers between you and us that we are getting to first as we build our way out to something that, that, that's, you know, that far out of town. But it might be, you know, there might be something that's happening sooner. We might have a regeneration site closer uh, to you. Yeah. And we are, you know... I, there is no one that wants to get this infrastructure and this thing built out quicker than I do. Yes? Do you want to find a new generation site? What does that mean? So we have, uh, we have a central office that, that everything feeds into through the falls. And then you have a smaller central office in Little Fork that feeds to the falls, that feeds to, uh, it'll, it'll now go down through McGregor uh, through our new infrastructure and so those are like the main hubs main offices then from those as you get further and further out into the rural areas we have small regeneration sites and you probably call, see, it call it a remote regeneration site yep yep and so we have a series of those as you go out further and further for KCC TV, which is our local peg channel, sure, which is delivered through uh, Mid-Continent Cable. Okay. And what I'm wondering is, is that, is there, is your Vantage TV, is that 
a cable, is that a satellite system now? No. It'll be an internet system. Correct. Okay, so what I'm wondering is, because Midco actually has a competitive advantage against Vantage TV, because um, they offer this local station, which allows people to, you know, uh, watch government meetings, watch community events. It's very popular and people watch it. It's better than reality TV, right? It relates to their lives. It gives a local voice. Sure. So one of the things that I would be interested in as a volunteer for KCC TV, if there was some way that through the Vantage system we could offer KCC TV great. and give Vantage TV the same advantage that Midco has. That'd be great. It yeah, would love be. To Let's talk. I'd love to talk to you about that. Yep, okay, that's thank awesome. You. Any other questions? Yes. Yes. Most of our most of our sites are fiber. Now, there's a lot of noise around fiber versus copper and and so forth. The the reality is that we can we we will deliver you bandwidth. We can deliver very high symmetrical bandwidth over copper, 50, 70 meg over copper. That is more than most businesses, even large businesses, would use on a normal basis. So what you want is for us to be able to keep pushing the bandwidth out. You hear a lot of the fiber to the home, and you know you hear a lot of that kind of a push. Um, and, and that's great for certain areas, certain circumstances, but you have a copper infrastructure that we're trying to leverage and that we can use today for many purposes. But most of our sites and remotes regeneration sites are fiber fed, or we're trying to push fiber out to them. Not all of them. You know, that's why the some of the folks way, way out, um, those, are, those have old equipment, old infrastructure, and so forth. Does that answer your question? It does. With the DSL to the arm. Right. From those regeneration sites, those can also be copper fed though. Those could be mm -hmm. fed by fiber or copper and still deliver enough bandwidth to, to push it further. Can you go back to your internet Talk to your dad. Oh, it's my brother. Oh, is that and your brother? Yeah. Oh, it is. Well, well, Bill is it's, your brother. It's, okay. We have to pay for four connections. Yeah. Basically, and, and I still can't update my iPhone. I can't uh, download a large file. Understood. Uh, we have with the Rainy Lake Property Owners Association, which is uh, all the folks out there. I don't know how many people that have hooked up or the potential to hook up, but uh, what is the uh, uh, 69 bucks a month? Whatever that number is, I mean, that's a lot of money. Right. And I mean, everywhere else, they have it. And we're at a huge disadvantage uh, from a tourism standpoint. Right. I mean, people check in and check out. They want to be connected, and it is so frustrating. And, and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this, too, as well. Your technicians are great. Um, I mean, everybody, you know, maybe some of the other people jump on the screen, but they do. It's, I, I understand it's not their fault. I know it. Somehow we have to get to the current, like everybody else's. Right. It's, it's chemicals. So let's let's roll back to the slide I was on. And I know that. Um, and I did meet with your brother. Is your brother Bill? Yep. Yeah. And I did meet with Bill and with Paul uh, a couple of months back to uh, fully understand your situation. Um, and one of the things that I did when I moved here was. I checked in on the projects that service your area, and those were not on the table to be built in 2016. And I do not announce, and you guys have all kinds of film and recording stuff going on, so I want to be very accurate, but 
Um, I don't announce or say that we're going to do something for you until we are. I see the equipment and we're putting uh, infrastructure into the ground. What I can tell you is, since those conversations, I did go back to our company. I did uh, help them better understand the needs of this area and those two specific projects. And uh, those have been moved through all of our internal processes. And um, I will keep you specifically updated on if they're able to get out of that process and actually start construction in 2016. So I can tell you that I pulled those forward, that Frontier understands that need and that concern and that consternation. And we are, we are very, very close to uh, getting those to be able to be rolled out. And my hope is uh, during this year. I will let you know though if it's a go or no go as soon as we know. And I'll, I'll show you those two sites really quick. Excuse me. So yes, sir. There is no firm design or plan to move They're designed, they are planned, they have went through our internal funding gates. Um, I have outside plant engineers applying for permits because we have to, you know, we have to go under the water, right? So we are we are taking all those steps and that's exactly where we're at right now. And again, I am glad to I keep you personally updated on as soon as I see that project released and we start breaking ground, uh, then it's happening. And, and ahead of that, I'm not, I want you to have the straightforward information. I don't want you to think that it's happened and it's not. He promised me he didn't. I want you to know exactly where it's at. And I'm glad to spend some time with you after the, after the meeting. But we did pull those forward. Um, they have went through all the internal gates, if you will. And, um, you know, I'm an optimistic guy. I, I feel very good about where we're at with those, with those two specific projects that are going to bring internet out to Gold Shores and internet out to Island View. When we make those changes, um, that's, that's a world-class internet. You're gonna go from 2005 to today. Just skip all the steps in between. So I would be able to do what I tried to do a few years back, is the radar. Yes. Yeah, you know, you will need to just just to think about use for a second. You will need to do a couple things. Um, you will need to probably get a higher end product, which you'll be able to deliver because the infrastructure is there. You'll probably need to get a higher grade product because you have these people. You know, some people are just doing email, but. As you put that in place, you're going to want to manage that. That's one of the things we can help you with. You're going to want to manage that use so you don't have some super gamer uh, draining everybody down and no matter how much bandwidth you buy, everybody has a tough experience. Today, like your wireless modem that's in your resort, I mean, a couple people can, can hook onto that and just consume it down immediately. So if you have a true wireless solution, which is you know, one of the products and services we provide, um, you want to have a managed network and you want to limit people's time and their use so they can't leave it on, you know, usually 20 minutes. Like if it's free, now if you're charging them for it, that's a whole different ballgame. And some people, you know, in apartment complexes and so forth, buy from us, charge their tenants. And so there's a whole host of things that you'll be able to do that you were not capable of doing before. We, could, we couldn't get that that far out to you. So the answer is yes. Now, if you're expecting your basic product to serve that many people, they, they just use too much data. They'll all, they'll all run you. But you can compartmentalize like your business stuff so that's never interrupted, and then your stuff that you're using for your customers. And that's something we'll make sure, Tom, that we follow up with you on. Yes. You have alluded to the fact that right now we can have as much data as we want. 
people can. People can. People, people, people the yes. residential consumer. Yeah. Now, yeah. now some mobile companies are starting to limit you, right? Have, they have for a long time. Yeah. yeah. Some so, have, some have not. Right. Okay. So when do you foresee that we'll be paying for the amount of data we actually download? It that, won't be just an open faucet. That I don't know. That's kind of an industry, kind of an industry thing. Um, when you look at it, there are very few users that use a huge amount of data. So it really isn't like you want to affect everybody because you have a, the lowest common denominator, a few people. So it may be that we take these T-byte, these terabyte a month users and charge them differently, leave everybody else, who knows. We're trying to be thoughtful about that because our long-term health and growth depends on our customers. We don't exist without you. So we don't want to, you know, I talked about us being customer-centric as a company. We're really trying to be thoughtful about that and take care of the vast majority of our users. Yes? Our business is in between theirs and ours. Yes. So when this project is complete, how will we know? We will, will our be, signal just automatically get better, or do we need to take action to take advantage of it? We will make everybody's experience that's on those devices now better, mm -hmm. as it sits today, turning it up to Tom whatever the maximum is that we're able to deliver to you, again, depending on your distance and all those things. And then other products and services will be available. And if you're a commercial account, a commercial residential, yeah, and we will be calling you, we will be putting signs out, we will be glad to raise that level up past that if you want even more bandwidth. And um, I'll make sure Sean shoots out my contact information, and I'm glad to put you into our retail. We have a Minnesota retail person, Northern Minnesota retail person, Michelle. Um, she will definitely love to reach out to you if you want to go beyond what we're going to turn you up to just as your basic service. Any other questions? Do you still have the billboard on the south edge of town? Yes. What is that? 1999. So what would you t say to those of us that are sitting here? And I looked at my most recent bill. It's more than three times that I'm And you're delivering a service to me that you admit doesn't live up to a six-year-old year old. So, what are you looking for? I you guess wanna... what I'm looking for is an answer to why is my bill sixty-five dollars a month? Your, is this your residential or your business bill? Residential. Um, do you have phone with us? No. So it's just internet service. It's just internet service. Okay, we could talk to you so about it's more that. More than three times what you advertise in fact, your services. The 1999 on the billboard is with an access line. So if you have an access line, the internet is $19 to add the two. So that's what the 1999 promotion is. So if if we have a thing that we want to do with your residential bill and you want to talk to me about that afterwards, I'm fine doing that. Be glad to do that. See if there's something we have that's that's better. I'm even mindful of everyone's time. Uh, as you can tell, this is a very important topic and very large in scale and scope. And I appreciate Tom you taking the time today. And as he said, he would probably be available after after the session sure. to, to visit with folks. So I want to thank everyone for coming out. Thank you, Tom, for the information and the commitment to our area. And uh, thank uh, the chamber and the city again for hosting these uh, lunch and learns. Uh, and with that, uh, say uh, have a good afternoon. Okay.